I finally get to share with you the tool that I use to review reports. In this video, I'm going to take you through step by step how to review a report using a tool that I've developed over the years as an engineer and a consultant that I've used to review many reports, consultancy, studies, uh, project reports, whatever you like. I've used this tool to review it. While I've focused on this video on how to review consultancy or project reports, this, can be, this tool can be used in any context where you're responsible for reviewing a report. Now that's what this channel is about, sharing the sorts of tools, tips, tricks and processes that I've used over the years as an engineer and a consultant to cut through complexity of different problems you face in the workplace and communicate easily your solutions. So my name's Chris and follow along if you're interested to see how we can review our reports. So what I've got on the screen here is the basics of our tool. So I call it the check and balance tool where we look at what our objectives are, we define our criteria meeting those objectives and then we examine the report to see how that report meets our criteria and our objectives. So the first step to reviewing the report is to decide what our objectives are. Now often with a report, the report will state its objectives and they're mostly aligned. I'll, I'll go through some examples later on, but you can see, but you'll be able to see that our objectives for a report are most of the time aligned to the objectives of the report. Now, sometimes uh, I, I've been in a situation myself where uh, you're representing a, a client, say a government body, who's reviewing the work of, of, that someone submitted. So your objectives might be to keep your client happy rather than to uh, say conduct a detailed review of the report. So depending on what your objectives are, but that's the first thing to define what your objectives are in this review. So the next thing to define is what criteria are you going to look at? What criteria are you going to look at for your review uh, when you look at this report? Sometimes this is well defined. For example, in an engineering report, you might have a set of specific requirements that must be met inside the report. Now, that makes it nice and easy to define your criteria, but I've gone through some on the next slide. Uh, you can see over there on the screen, I've gone through some on the next slide about uh, the sorts of criteria that you can look for if you don't have any defined yourself already, if you've just been throwing this report to review and you don't have any criteria to look at it. So then after thinking about what criteria you're going to review your report against, and of course how you have to report, if you need to report that criteria to someone else, then uh, the next step is to actually read the report, to go through the report and see what it has to say. Uh, so going through the report gives you the opportunity to see how your criteria is met. So you can see that this balances, and so I call it the check and balance model, this balances how our criteria is met against the criteria that we developed. Uh, and then to continue on uh, and to look at does the report as it's written meet our objectives? And so that balances off against our objectives. Uh, I've gone with a, I call it a seesaw, but uh, I've, different countries use different phrases for it. That's why I call it a check and balance model because you're using the report as a balance between you and whoever wrote the report or whoever was responsible for the report. So a bit of a check and balance, uh, check that we're meeting our criteria and our objectives, balance off against the report. So some of those criteria that I've developed, some of those criteria that I've really used in the past, uh, are based around these four uh, processes, these four ideas in a report. So uh, first of all, to define our objectives. So our objectives, most of the time, our objectives align with the report objectives. Uh, so that could be, uh, do we want this, should this report be representing the most feasible way to accomplish a problem? Is this report representing the change that we're gonna, uh, that's gonna take place in our organization? Or, or could this report be uh, simply about the status of the project? Uh, helping everyone in the audience understand the status of the project. So that's where our objectives uh, can align with the report objectives. However, I did mention that sometimes they don't necessarily align. I was reviewing a report recently where uh, the client just requested that we, we make sure that a certain amount of uh, information was looked at and nothing else. Uh, so the detailed checking of the report, the detailed review was done by someone else. And so our responsibility and our budget was just to review if certain key bits of information were covered and nothing else. So that's when your objectives can uh, be misaligned with the objectives of the report. So always bear in mind your objectives for your review when you're conducting your review. Uh, it, it, being a consultant, it's helped me save a lot of time by considering my objectives rather than necessarily the objectives of the report, but often they do align. So once you know your objectives, uh, to develop within this criteria. Now, you develop criteria within your objective. However, uh, I've recommended here four places you can start with. 
So uh, now this isn't representative of necessarily of the importance of each of these. Uh, I've considered uh, content to be the most important feature of a report to be the most important thing. However, uh, when I'm reviewing a report, I tend to look at these four items. So the first one is uh, the appearance. Uh, so what the report looks like. This is the appearance, the grammar and the length of the report. So kind of the what the report looks like rather than anything in depth. So is, is the grammar correct? Is the grammar suitable for the audience? Uh, a lot of my audience uh, speaks English as a second language. And so does that grammar match I wouldn't want to be overly formal like I would say submitting a report in the UK if I'm submitting a report in say uh, Singapore where uh, we can be strict different there are different standards for the grammar I should say so uh, the some of the appearance and grammar of the report is what I'd look at here uh, are pictures in the right spot does the, does the text look okay uh, has the text flown over the pages correctly and that's the sort of thing considering the appearance what what the report looks like and then uh, can, in conjunction with that, how long is the report? Uh, do we want a short brief report that just summarizes the details perfectly? Or do we want a lot of detail and in-depth? It, it, this is where we can start to consider our audience as well because there's no point submitting a 600-page report when your audience just wants a one-page answer. It's going to be overkill. They're going to ask for a more summary and you're just making more work for yourself to, to put in that much detail. So it really, so I find length to be a question, a trade-off between uh, how well you can summarize the report and how much depth you can go in. Either way, I find this is a bit independent of quality because either way you should be submitting high quality reports or you should be uh, encouraging your author to produce high quality reports for your review. Uh, so quality is something that I've kind of linked in here to content, so I'll get to that in a minute. But the next thing I like to look at is the structure of the report. So this is how well the report flows in terms of uh, section one and then section two, section three. Uh, are, there, are the subsections used correctly? Uh, is there an executive summary if there needs to be one? Uh, are there, is there a good summary at the start of each section? Is that something that's important in this context? Are, there, are the appendices good? This is our opportunity to also take a flick through the appendices. Are there too many? I saw one report recently where there were, uh, the appendices went up to A, B, so what's that, 20, 28 appendices? And I was joking with someone else who had to review the same report and said, uh, and he said this, some of these appendices should be their own independent reports. They shouldn't be bundled into this one because there were something like 4,000 pages of appendices when no, that should have been a separate report on a separate matter. So this is the opportunity to, to think about the structure of the report and to look at could the structure be improved? Is the structure appropriate for your objectives? And of course, all of these come back to your objectives rather than the objectives of the report. And if those objectives align, then so be it. But uh, review bearing in mind your own personal objectives or your own professional objectives, whichever way you want to phrase that. So after looking at the structure of the report, I like to look at the revisions. So what is the history of this document? Have parts of it changed? So to look at has say this section of the document changed? How has that changed over time? Because if you're only reviewing the latest version of a document, then perhaps you should be considering only those uh, revisions in that latest version and how that those revisions have affected the, the other criteria here. Uh, so sometimes you'll be given a, a revised document and you'll just be asked to review the revisions. However, just bear in mind that sometimes those revisions can be um, emblematic or, or uh, change the way that the report was put together and change the content in other ways despite just the way the text has changed. So that's why I, I kind of leave the content review to the end here where even though it's the most important, where I look at actually what is the content of this report? What is this report about? And the way I like to think about this is by looking at the process that was involved in whatever triggered this report. So for example, if this was a project, if this was a project status report, well, how was the project status information gathered? Is it looking at the deliverables? Is it looking at the cost of the project? Is it looking at delays or milestones? And then considering how, not only how the outcome of that process was recorded in the report, but also how the inputs to the process and how the process itself was recorded. So I usually like to model everything that goes, everything that can go into a report as a process and a set of inputs, a process and an output. And then is, are those three stages 
captured inside the report. Uh, there are some more things. So I'm doing a video shortly about how to write a report. So if you're interested in that one, hit subscribe and that will come out soon about what sort of things go into a report. But just briefly, when reviewing, I like to think about, okay, well, what was the process that the person went through in terms of the work that was done to be reported on, so if it's project status, project status, if it's a feasibility study, what was the feasibility that was studied? Uh, and then are those, is that input process and output captured within the report and with the relevant importance? Sometimes people like to use creative language to gloss over things that shouldn't be or to uh, manipulate the way certain things are written. And this is also by understanding the underlying process beneath the report, this is your opportunity to try to catch some of those things. So uh, there's some of the criteria, how I link those four key criteria for reviewing a report back to our objectives always like to think about those in the context of our objectives. So I like to share here three tips that I've learned over the years from reviewing reports. Uh, the first tip I could share is to try to review against something external. So that kind of links into the last point I was making before about the processes. So if you're looking at something external to the report, you've got, uh, you can, I like to physically tick off, okay, our report represents this item uh, against this item. Our report represents that item against that item. So sometimes in an engineering context, this could be a list of specifications. Does our report meet those uh, specifications or requirements that we're, we're writing against? Uh, but it could also be uh, a set of drawings, for example. I, I'm kind of stuck in the engineering mind this afternoon, but uh, say you had a set of engineering drawings, does your report match those drawings and to actually tick off against that? So I do like to, uh, that kind of gives rise to why I put in the last section about criteria, about understanding the process first before, or understanding the underlying process when you conduct your review. So that, that's why I like to understand that process because I like to review against something external. I don't like to review a report against itself because then all you're doing is looking for contradictions. You're not adding any value by your review and adding value to a review is something that I highly recommend doing if you're a consultant. So the second thing I like to look, the second tip I'd like to share is to consider the audience. So not only when you receive a review, uh, report to review, you're often considering just the people who wrote it, what the grammar is like. I found that a lot of people don't think about the audience and I'd highly recommend that as well. Is your audience technical? Uh, what languages do they speak? What grammar are they expecting? What's their background? Where did they go to university? What's their degree like? Uh, what experience do they have? All those sorts of things I like to put into uh, when I like to think about this more when I write a report, but it certainly comes through when you review a report to think about who the audience is, who's going to be reading this and in what context. Uh, I'll put in, or I'll recommend vastly different language if your report is destined for the public eye as if it was destined for something internal. Usually that means I'll let a lot of uh, grammar mistakes slip if it's going to be just internally, or I'll let a lot of clunky expressions through, or I'll let it be a lot technical. However, when uh, the report's going to be public, I'm going to scrutinize all of those and focus on everything. A public report or is a reflection of your company, a reflection of you and your employer, and you've got to make sure that it's uh, key, <laughs> that everything's covered and that it's of high quality. So consider the audience, the second tip I'll give you. And the third tip, and this is one that you can probably see is uh, quite endemic through my channel and I highly recommend uh, checking out a book called uh, Back of the Napkin by Dan Rome. Because uh, I like to ask when I'm reviewing a report and when I'm writing it as well, would graphics help? So where would graphics help to explain a problem? It can be really boring to have a big block of text in a report and you can see uh, I like this style in everything I do. You can see from this video, I like to put things on the screen, I like to put graphics on the screen to really help illustrate the points that I'm trying to make. And it's the same in a report. So when reviewing a report or when writing a report, would graphics help? Is there some way you can show off the points you're trying to make in the text by using graphics? So that's the, uh, key tips and, and criteria that I use when I'm reviewing a report. So hopefully you've picked up a few of these uh, lessons learned here. Some of the ways that we can apply this check and balance tool to reviewing a report. I like to use this check and balance tool to review a whole bunch of other things as well. Uh, slideshows, Excel spreadsheets, data analysis. So if you're interested in those sorts of things, please hit subscribe. Uh, YouTube will suggest those videos automatically. And upcoming is my video on how to write a report. So stay tuned for that one as well. And hopefully I'll 
I'll see you in the next video.